Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to look at uh, KiCad's 3D functions. Originally, I was going to make this part of the introduction to KiCad from an Eagle user's perspective, but since Eagle doesn't have any kind of 3D capability at all or whatsoever, I didn't think it would be a reasonable comparison where all I'd be doing is, is saying, well, Eagle doesn't have this, and Eagle doesn't have that, so on and so forth. So uh, the other thing to mention here is that it took me quite some time to piece together exactly what was going on with uh, KiCad's 3D functions. The documentation leaves a lot to be desired, and what I'm presenting to you is what I've been able to piece together. So once you have your board designed, this is a... a a project that I'm working on right now. Uh, what you can do is you, you can either go to view, 3D viewer, or the shortcut is uh, Alt plus 3. And what KiCad will load up is this. This is a 3D render of the board that we're looking at. And I've already spent some time uh, working on this to get it uh, at least presentable. But uh, the scroll wheel zooms you in and out. Uh, clicking the scroll wheel lets you pan around. And then holding the left mouse button uh, rotates you. So if we look at the underside of the board, we have some, uh, what is the, 1206 capacitors, uh, some 0805 capacitor, and some 0805 resistors. And with a left mouse click to rotate, we have some potentiometers. And I actually had to settle on these because I could not find their uh, six pin variant. I could only find the four pin, and so I included the four pin. We have a, ni uh, a nice switch here, some components, but the part that we're missing and the part we're going to work on today are these three headphone jacks. And I'm going to use these three headphone jacks as an example on how to uh, work with KiCad's uh, 3D components. So the first thing that you need to work with KiCad's uh, 3D uh, tools is a nice tool. Um, I'm not sure oh, uh, EZW uh, wrote this uh, tool. This is available on SourceForge. Uh, as we'll see a little bit later, uh, EZW has created a bunch of other stuff that's very, very helpful. Thank you very much to EZW. But the problem I found with the EZW tool, sorry, with the KiCad step-up tool, is that the, the while the videos give you a basic description of what needs to be done, there are some parts and pieces that are missing. So the... The first thing is you do is you download it, and I've already downloaded it. And actually, I guess I, I skipped a step. The other thing you need is a free CAD. This is, as the name implies, a, a free uh, CAD tool that uh, the KiCad Step Up tool works with. And just for the sake of posterity, let's do that. And it's free. Uh, freecadweb.org uh, is where you download it from. So the, uh, let's come back over here, uh, the KiCad step-up tool is actually a plugin into FreeCAD, and the thing that I spent a very long time chasing is, well, how do you actually install plugins into FreeCAD? There was not a whole lot of documentation as far as that went. But what I ended up finding is if you open up FreeCAD, you go to Macros, Macros. And if you look down here, this is the desired location for where you want to put your macros. Let me close that, and let's do this as, as a side-by-side. -side. Macros, like that. So now I have the folder open on where I downloaded right here. Go ahead and pop you open, extract you like that. I want to open this up, open this up, and you have a folder here with a whole bunch of stuff in it. Uh, the Let's see here if I remember this off the top of my head. 
the file format no, I don't oh well but anyway uh, all I did was is I took everything uh, control a control C that's in this folder I copied it and then if we go over to our C drive and do a split screen with FreeCAD, we can follow where this directory takes us. So if we go to users, uh, Igor, that's me, app data, and I actually have uh, the function turned on to show uh, hidden uh, file directories, and you can see that it's kind of grayed out. Uh, this app data file directory is hidden, so you may have to turn on uh, the ability to view hidden files and folders to be able to see it. So go ahead and open that up. We're going to roaming uh, FreeCAD like that. And what I found is the macros directory was not even there. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and call it macro. Like that, open that up and go ahead and paste the contents of that folder in there like that. So once we're done with that, we can close out of macros and open macros back up. And as we can see, the uh, KiCad step up tools and uh, that file extension I was thinking of is FC macros for free CAD macros. All right, so that's the next step we have that tool uploaded. Uh, now we need a 3D model of the part that we want. And the part where we were looking at is this one right here. This is a, a headphone jack. And it's made by CUI Incorporated. So let's go ahead and search for CUI Incorporated, like that. And lo and behold, their name is CUI. And here we go. This is their website. Uh, we can go to Components, Connectors. And we want 3D Model Library. And we want to go look at Connectors. I think that's already selected. Audio. We want to look at 3.5 millimeter. Like that, and if we look down here, we have our uh, particular audio jacks, and the one that we have is a uh, four three five one four. Four three five one four. That's this guy. Click on three D model, and then you have you can look at the 3D model that's available for it. And if you grab this list here, there's a whole bunch of file formats available to you. The one I've been using is the Step AP uh, 214. Uh, but uh, STL and IGES seem to also work. But for this example, we're going to use this uh, Step AP 214. And go ahead and download it. And we're going to uh, put this into the same directory as we had uh, the KiCad step up tool. Save like that. And what I want to do is copy this name. Because that'll come in handy a little bit later. Go ahead and close out of you. Now we can jump over to FreeCAD. And first of all, you want to go ahead and open that. Let's see here, 2017 project, 3D files. Oh, I need to unzip it first. Let me come back this way. This is our we'll extract it like that. And let's go back to FreeCAD and open 3D files. This guy. All right. And so what you'll see is a SJ43. 514 SMT STP. This is the step file that we just downloaded. And when we go ahead and open it up, it will pop up in 3D CAD. And 
something to note is this is not going to be a tutorial on FreeCAD. Uh, I will let you learn that all on your own. But uh, the scroll wheel zooms you in and out. Pushing the scroll wheel uh, rotates you around. And left click selects things, but that's irrelevant. So what we want to do now is we want to run the uh, tool. Something to mention beforehand. If we look in here, uh, this fillet 35 is the this whole part. If you have multiple parts here, because sometimes, uh, let me give you an example, uh, Alt 3, this switch right here, the 3D model for it actually came as two pieces, the body and the actual switch housing, the, the little tang you push, came as two pieces, and what you have to do is you have to join them into a single piece. The way you do that is, uh, first you switch over to the parts uh, workspace, I don't, I don't remember what FreeCAD calls this, Switch over to the parts workspace, and then you select two components here. And then if you come over here, uh, make union of several shapes. You hit that, and that will make you a union of multiple pieces. And this took a took me a hot minute to figure out. But the part that we're working with today only has uh, two components. Now that our component is loaded up, we can go ahead and run the macro. And you may have the toolbar up here, or you can grab it from up there. If you click on here, grab that, and hit Execute. The macro will execute. The macro is this window here. I have very mixed feelings about this window, and that is that if I click over here, this, this window is essentially forced to be directly on top. And they like said mixed feelings, but anyway. Now that we have this window loaded up, we have, if you hit this help button, this goes into uh, some parts and pieces of how to use it and some stuff about it, but uh, it's not super duper descriptive. Let me close that. And uh, um Try to put this, and it took some figuring out on how to do this. Uh, something to note: if you hit config, this is where the configuration file lives for uh, this tool here, and we'll touch on that in a minute. But anyway, once we have uh, the component and the tool here loaded up, what we want to do is we want to load the KiteCAD footprint module. Go ahead and load that up. And my library lives in Dropbox. We want to go to hardware, library files, and more. KiCad. Igor.pretty uh, is the uh, library file extension. And what we're looking for is the SJ43514. Uh, and go ahead and hit open. And what you will see is effectively a little piece of the circuit board loaded in that has the footprint laid out on it and what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to reorient this component to match the footprint what really helps with that is if we hit this create access button and this will show you the uh, three axes and if we look down here, in the bottom right-hand corner, it shows you what they actually are. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to rotate this component in the x-axis to uh, match the orientation because it's kind of sitting sideways. And let me slide this over. What it will complain about, let me show you. If I hit rotate x, it'll say, oh, I have to select a part. So go ahead and select that guy and then hit rotate x and boop, it rotates over. The next thing is the part is facing in the wrong direction. So we want to bring the part all the way around and so that it will be rotating in the Z axis like that. So we'll rotate Z and rotate Z again like that. 
and now the part is facing the correct way. If you look up here, you have some uh, uh, predetermined views, and we want to hit the view button like that. So we see the part from the side, and we want to zoom in. And the next thing I want to do is I want to translate this thing up, which you can see the blue uh, Z-axis pointer pointing up here. And so I want to translate this in the Z-axis, and that's what these buttons do. A note of caution on these buttons is that they are not an absolute position, they are a relative position. So you have to, they're, they're used to slide stuff back and forth. So we want to slide something a millimeter. You translate, and the part updates like that. And you can hit translate again, and the part updates again, and that actually gets us pretty close to where we want to go. So now we want to make this, let's say, 0.1 millimeters. Translate, translate. And I think that's reasonably close enough that the uh, the pad here now is sitting roughly on the surface of the board. Let me zoom out like that. And the next thing we want to do is we want to slide this part back. It looks like it's already aligned pretty decently in this orientation, or maybe not. I guess we'll see when we get there. So now I want to look at it from the side again. But now I'm looking for where these holes line up with these uh, drills in the board. To slide the uh, connector along the x-axis, we want to go ahead and put in a measurement here, and we want to translate. Do, 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 do. This part may take a while, and if you're a perfectionist, it's even worse. That gets it pretty close, and we've actually overshot it a little. And so now I can go, let's say, minus 0.05. When I hit translate, it moves it in the opposite direction because it's negative. So that looks uh, lined up. And now let's zoom out and see how well we're lined up in the, what is that, the Y direction. And it looks like pretty poorly. So what we could do is, uh, let's see here, let's look at the bottom view like that. And in the Y direction, let's translate it minus 0.05. And let's see how that does. Oh, that's sliding us in the wrong direction. So let's take off the minus. Translate Y. Like that. Perfection. Now it's lined up perfectly. So now we have the uh, headphone jack here oriented in space. And now that we've done that, uh, go ahead and make sure that it's still selected. And we want to hit the export to KiCad tap uh, and scale VRM button like that. And once you hit the button, you wait for a little bit. Uh, I guess just leave these as default. I really haven't any, had any issues leaving them as default like that. And this is going to ask you about colors and same thing. I just keep hitting OK because I don't particularly care about the colors. And what this thing will tell you is that the two files here were exported to C users Igor. And we can pop back over here and see this is where my annoyance with this tool comes from is that it's now st it's still stuck in the foreground and I can't minimize it because I still have <clears throat> this info box open. So let's go ahead and close the info box, minimize this, minimize this. Come back over to our folder structure here and we want to go see users Igor and the two files are right here. And remember that KSU config INI file I mentioned earlier? This file lives here as well. So we want to grab U and U and go ahead and cut them. And I've been storing these in my library, which I don't know if it's necessarily the correct place to store them, but oh well, I guess. Let's back out to hardware, library files, and I've been putting them into my KiCad 
library folder just to kind of keep them together. Paste. Nope, I guess the name did not stick. I want to come back over to hardware, projects, 3D files. Who's this guy? I want to grab the name. Back to hardware, library files, Kaikan, Igor. Come on. Paste. Paste, like that. So now we have the name changed, and we have a WRL, and we have a step. Oh, where'd they go? WRL and step of the same file. And the reason we need a WRL and a step will become obvious a little bit later here, but the first part file that we need is the WRL. So now if we jump back over to KiCad like that, let's go Alt-3 to see the 3D view. And you can see that the uh, three uh, headphone jacks are not populated in this case. And so we want to add the 3D file for that. So right click on the switch here. We want footprint J1, which is switch one, edit parameters, jump over to the 3D settings tab. We want to add a 3D shape. We want to navigate over where we stored them, and I store mine in Dropbox, Hardware, Library Files, KiCad, Igor Pretty, and it is the SJ43514 SMT WRL. Notice how it's a WRL. And go ahead and open, and we want to make this path relative to uh, Packages 3D, and we do yes like that. And hit OK, and we want to do this for all three because they are treated as three separate entities. And it, what's nice about doing it the second and third time around is that it's already pointing to the correct folders. Add, add, open, yes, and OK. So now that we have those three loaded up, if I go Alt-3 and the model loads, ta-da, we now have headphone jacks built into our <clears throat> 3D model. Now the problem with this 3D model is that KiCad, while it looks really pretty sitting here, KiCad does not have any particularly good way of exporting this in any kind of file format that matters. And that's where that WRL versus step file uh, issue comes in. Whenever you make stuff for this, for the, the 3D model view, you need both a step and a WRL file to go hand in hand. The reason for this is that uh, this uh, KiCad step tool, let's see here, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, FreeCAD tool, Also incorporates a load uh, board uh, uh, a load board dot cad like chi cad PCB function, and so this allows you to pull a board in. And we want to go ahead and close out of view for a second. We want to pull that board in, but something I did not mention initially is if we come back here, go C drive. Um, where am I going? Users, Igor. Back to this case, you config INI file. You want to go ahead, right click on it, hit open with and WordPad. Don't open it in Notepad because it looks like gibberish. Open it in WordPad. If we open this up and go ahead and look at this line right here. C program files, KiCad, share, KiCad, modules, packages, 3D. You may have to change the uh, target of this line to point to where the 3D packages of your KiCad are stored. I'm using, I think it's KiCad 4.0.5, and this is where those packages, this is where I've changed this link to point to where those packages are because I've been using this tool previously. And once you do that, go ahead and save it. 
And if we go back to FreeCAD, go ahead and launch the uh, step up tool like that. <clears throat> and I want to load the KiCad PCB. I want to open up the. Actually, I don't think we saved it. Is the, going to be the problem? Come here, save it like that. Go back to FreeCAD. There we go. Now it's saved. This is that uh, board I've been showing you, the audio mixer. And if I go ahead and double click on that, you will actually see here, right here on the screen, as the tool builds the board. There's the board. And now it populates it with the components that we have. And it's specifically looking for step files to do this. And this is why you need both a WRL and a step file. And something to note here, it's going to tell you what it's missing. And I do not yet have uh, step models for the SOT23 5 and 6, for the SOIC here, and for a pin header. You can hit OK. OK. There we go, there's one more. And what the tool did is it generated me the audio mixer step file in my audio mixer KiCad folder where I <clears throat> opened the project from. And now it will show you what the board looks like in 3D. And since we pulled this into FreeCAD, you can now save this as a step file or whatever else that you want. You can save this as a useful format for what you need. Now we run into the, you can look around, we have our resistors and capacitors and other parts and pieces. What you can, I'm trying to think how to phrase this properly. What you will run into is that by default, KiCad does not come with both WRL and step models for everything. Let me go ahead and close out of you. What you need to do that is get them separately. And one way to get you started is uh, uh, the Easy uh, W uh, gentleman here also has a GitHub repository for KiCad 3D models. And this is enough to get you started. We have capacitors, uh, SMD, Tantalum capacitors. SOIC, QFP, and resistors. <clears throat> and let me click on one of these. If you look at what's included, you get both a step and a WRL of all the components, and this allows you to both view the 3D stuff in KiCad and to be able to export it using the step up tool. There are some converters available that can take a WRL and convert it to a step, but I have not used any of them. All these files that you see here, uh, once you download the package here, you have to unzip it, and you have to uh, move all of the, copy all these files into the uh, KiCad directory for uh, 3D shapes. And we saw that directory uh, a little bit earlier, but just to reiterate, you wanna go to uh, C file, Program Files, KiCad, uh, Share, KiCad again, Modules, and it's, uh, do, 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 where is it, where is it, uh, Packages 3D here, and your Capacitor SMD 3D Shapes would go in here, and you see that I've already got all of them uh, installed, so I have a step and a WRL for... <clears throat> each one of the packages, but if we look at, let's say, uh, to, to do capacitors through hole here, you only see the WRL and whatever the wings is. I have no idea what that file is. Anyway, the I only have the WRL, and that's because I don't have that directory, and same thing for, let's say, resistors. <clears throat> resistors, SMD, 3D shapes, we have a WRL and a step. Again, the documentation is pretty well lacking, in that department, so I'm you know, hoping that uh, this video clears up how to uh, add 3D models to your uh, KiCad project, how to uh, show them, you know, how to view them in KiCad, 
and then how to uh, export them into a usable format and so now this is a step file and you can pull a step file into a more respectable you know into like SolidWorks or something like that if you have it available to you or you can use a uh, free CAD to uh, design a, a case for yourself thank you for watching uh, as always if you have any questions or comments you're uh, welcome to uh, post them down below